pediatrician as well as a pediatric dermatologist and I work in KK Women's and Children's Hospital Singapore. I see both children and adolescents with skin and other pediatric conditions in both the inpatient and outpatient setting. Neurofibromatosis is a genetic condition that causes multiple tumours arising from nerve tissues in different parts of the body. So the tumours are mainly benign but they sometimes can become malignant. It is either usually inherited from a parent who also has the condition, or it could also be due to a spontaneous genetic change to the cells that create a baby when no family member is affected. Now, there are two main types, NF1 and NF2, and we know that NF1 is more common. They have multiple noticeable flat skin marks called cafe or lay spots. They may also have freckles in unusual places like their armpits or groin areas. They may also have multiple bumpy soft tumours on or under the skin surface called neurofibromas. Patients can also have leash nodules. Okay, um, There are tiny bumps on the iris or the black parts of the eye and uh, skeletal or bony abnormalities. Then NF2, they do not have as many skin signs as NF1, but the patients typically have nerve tumours that grow on the nerve that controls our hearing and balance called vestibular schwannomas. They also get nerve tumours on the layers of the brain and they also get cataracts that cause clouding of the eyes. So unfortunately, there is no real medication to help to cure the disease. Well, as we understand more pathways driving tumour production, there is a new group of medications called MAC inhibitors. And I think that in the past few years, that's been used more often in patients who have NF1, who have tumours that are not amenable to surgery. Sometimes, the parents already know because one of them suffer from neurofibromatosis themselves. I mean, it runs in the family. So they might already be accepting the diagnosis. For those who may not have it in the family, naturally, they tend to be a bit more shocked, sad, and particularly so when they find out that this is a lifelong condition that might cause problems with no potential cure. They tell me that certainly they will not be able to buy any insurance products for their kids. And that is so important because they really worry about like, rising medical costs and things like that. So they have to come to terms with the fact that this is a lifelong condition. They would need to have regular checkups when the skin signs are very obvious, they feel very disfigured, they are ostracized for their appearance. I had a mum bring two kids to see me for something unrelated. These two kids had multiple cafe au lait spots on their skin and immediately I was concerned about neurofibromatosis. So during the consult, I asked the mum whether anyone had neurofibromatosis in the family and immediately she rolled up her long sleeves and showed me the multiple cafe oily spots and the neurofibromas on her arms and she said yes doctor i am the one i had such a hard time growing up i was always ostracized in school and even at work it was embarrassing and now i feel so sad that my kids got it from me. I felt sad when she related the story to me because whatever she has gone through it would be important, more important to you know, help her children get through it more easily or not even have to go through it through you know, seeking the, the right care. When I was a houseman working in orthopedics, I actually met a 14-year-old girl who was undergoing spinal surgery for scoliosis. She told me that she has neurofibromatosis. Her father was the one who gave it to her. And her father passed away from an incurable malignant brain tumour when she was only about 10 years old. Her paternal grandfather also passed away from a malignant brain tumour. She said that even though she knows that whatever she's going through now is just a spine surgery, but she really wonders 
whether she will also die from a brain tumor. It was quite sad because for a 14 year old child to think about potentially having a short lifespan, it was quite hard to see. But I was quite glad that she shared it with me because sometimes it's nice to share it with someone, you know, to, to have a listening ear. Okay, so, you know, I am a pediatrician by training. I enjoy working with kids. How I got into pediatric dermatology was um, due to a few reasons. One is that I, I actually am interested in the topic. 30% of the cases that we see involve the skin. I, mean, I thought that it's good to be properly trained and know how to treat patients appropriately. At the same time, when I was a trainee, I met Dr. Mark, who had come to set up pediatric dermatology in KK Hospital. And I was quite privileged to be able to learn from him and do some electives with him. When the time came that I could join his department, it was, it was um, quite exciting. Then I think personally also, I suffer from eczema since I was young and had to see multiple doctors. So I can empathize with how tough it may be and I think that if I can help them it does feel rewarding as well.